video do? Most importantly, at least traditionally, it was a facilitator of negotiations. This is very much what the GATT had done uh, before. It helped arrange the, the, the set of, of, of actual negotiations, put together an agenda, really facilitate. They do not write the rules for the negotiations. They don't write the rules for the final agreements. That is a role of governments. So the WTO does not set the rules. Instead, it helps countries, governments, come up with an agreement. And a very important aspect of this in the GATT and the WTO is that there is a required consensus for any changes in the basic WTO system. This is a point that's often not understood by a lot of people. The WTO cannot change unilaterally basic commitments. Furthermore, once there is a, an agreement in place, say the Uruguay round, any changes have to be agreed to by everybody. Another example of this is that when a new country joins the WTO, any member can block it. So in some ways, it's a very democratic operation. Once you're in, you can stop changes from going forth. In a sense, it's sort of like the national or the um, the Security Council at the UN, where every member has a veto. The other aspect of the WTO, which is has become in particularly important in, in recent years, is that it's an arbiter of disputes. That is to say, the WTO is a prime area where countries go to have a, a neutral third party discuss a commercial dispute. Now, one final aspect that it doesn't do is the WTO essentially dispenses no money. It does not offer loans to countries in who are who are members it's quite different from the IMF and the World Bank which are often criticized by having conditions put on funds to say developing countries the WTO does not give out money for all practical purposes it does not withhold money it is not an organization that is a source of funds for countries in need really of any of any type. So here, let's talk about uh, some of the basic uh, GATT and WTO principles. Now, one thing that's really important to understand is the sort of basic underlying issue is that this system is rules-based and non-discriminatory. That's the overriding idea of this system, that you write down rules, and everybody that's a member gets the same treatment. Now, there are some specific principles that also are important to understand. One is transparency. As much as possible, countries are very clear about what their international trade commitments might be. They write down their tariff schedules. Other members can see that. And furthermore, there's a trade policy review process every a few years where other WTO members evaluate the trade policy of a member government so that it's very clear about whether countries are living up to their commitments or not. Second one is most favored nation, MFN. Talk about that in more detail in a, in, in a moment, but it's really about treating all members of the WTO in the same way. There's also national treatment, another critical aspect of non-discrimination. Again, we'll talk about that in a minute. Reciprocal concessions is really a negotiating strategy. I mentioned this earlier. I reduce my tariffs, my trade barriers, if you reduce yours. So this is a, a, a very effective way for countries to ratchet down their, their trade restrictions. Binding commitments is, is important. You write down your tariff your maximum tariff rate, so-called bound tariffs, and you agree not to raise tariffs beyond those levels except under specific circumstances. Another important thing to keep in mind is that 
sovereign governments are the ones who apply the rules. The WTO does not have a system where it will make decisions for other countries. Instead, the member governments apply the rules subject to disputes, settlement procedures, which uh, we'll talk about in, in just a minute. Now, because this is an international agreement among uh, governments, there are many, many exceptions to these uh, principles. And we'll discuss these in various um, lectures uh, during the course. But in every one of these specific principles, there are a number of ways in which governments can be free of them, but under certain circumstances, under the rules that are written and agreed to by the, by the member governments. So again, most favored nation is a basic concept. It's a core issue in many of the trade disputes when countries and that are WTO members are disagreeing about something. It's often about whether or not a member government is receiving MFN treatment. And it's really about treating everybody that's a WTO member in the same way. And so the disputes are often about whether or not a country may be getting less favorable treatment than another, in which case uh, it can be considered a violation, or they may be get, getting more favorable treatment. And those are both areas of potential problem and conflict in, in, among WTO members. So here are a couple of exceptions to this MFN treatment, again, which will be discussed in, in other videos. One is free trade agreements. These are arrangements where some members of the WTO get better treatment than other members. For example, NAFTA in the United States has Canada and Mexico having zero tariffs, zero restrictions coming into the United States for a number of products that may have higher tariffs and likely do have higher tariffs if the exact same product is coming from Europe or Japan or China. And that is allowed under certain circumstances. You might also have problems among countries who claim that a foreign supplier is being treated more stringently than a domestic firm's based on their environmental policies. So the basic idea is that everybody is going to get treated uh, the same way. Actually, on this latter one, that really has more to do with one foreign government or firm getting treated less favorably than another foreign firm. National treatment is really about the domestic versus foreign. Again, a very common issue in disputes in front of the WTO where a foreign firm or government may complain that domestic firms are getting treated more favorably. And that would be a violation of national treatment where you agree to have the same treatment for both domestic and foreign. So if you have a de facto regulation that is more disadvantageous to foreigners than a domestic firm, that can cause problems under your WTO 